Hello and welcome to my workshop. My name is Paul. I'm a luthier and bow maker based in Tasmania, Australia. In this series, I will share some of the projects I work on each week, giving you a glimpse over my shoulder as I work as though you were looking through the window into my workshop. Okay, so here we've got the soundpost crack on the back of the violin. Um, and you can see it possibly needs a little bit more down here. Um, so I've glued the crack up, but because it's closed at each end, and then it was quite open once I cleaned it out, through the middle. I've also had to uh, inlay uh, some fresh maple back into the, the, the join. So there's about six different pieces of maple being inlaid into that. Um, and I possibly need to just do a little bit of work down this end just to get that really spot on. Maybe a Maybe a touch here, I'll have a look at that as well. Um, but I think it's pretty much ready. We can start looking at uh, doing a soundpost patch on the inside. So this is the line of where the crack is running down through the, through the inside. Um, that became a little bit more evident as I cleaned it out. The water started to, to work its way through. Um, it's still quite closed on the inside. It's not as not as open. So, uh, but to take the it's right where the soundpost is going to sit. So to take that pressure of the soundpost, if we just fit the soundpost to over it as it is, the pressure of that soundpost is likely to open that crack up again. So we need to remove some timber from this area and uh, inlay a, a fresh piece that will help displace the the pressure of the sound post across a large area um, and uh, prevent that, that sound post crack from opening up again. So I'm going to remove a lot of these lines and make a clearer oval around that um, and then we'll look to remove a small amount of timber. We'll take some measurements first to get the, the, the correct width, the correct depth of, of plate um, and then we'll uh, look to remove some material and, and go through the process of fitting a soundpost patch. So I've got a rough uh, drawing of where the soundpost patch is going to be. Um, hopefully this shows up. The camera that we're looking at. So right around the centre of the crack we've got uh, Three point one millimeters. Right down the center line, and that's three point one. Far edge. About the same actually. Still around three millimeters. Turn inside edge closest to the. So three point one. Getting a little wider. So three point four. So I'm going to take a few cuts here. Um, I'll show you, you know, a few of them. I'll probably edit a fair chunk of it out. It's just going to take too long in the video. Otherwise, um, I will note that I've, I've actually sort of made a little bit of a cradle for the for the instrument using the back using some bubble wrap, just just rolled up bubble wrap. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just to give me a bit more support and um, you can use uh, like a, um, a, a dentist's um, a paste to, to make a sort of solid cradle or you can even buy cradles you can you could use you know you can make up a wooden cradle with lined with leather and all sorts of things um, I've always found I like to be able to adjust it move it support in different areas I might want to work it this way this time I might want to switch the instrument around and work it from this side I might want to um, you know I might want to move it here and, and work it from, from here or something um, So that's sort of just how I've done it so far. Um, but yeah, there's different methods of supporting it and make, make a bit of a cradle. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, rocket science. You do need to be able to get around the, the ribs. It's a little, it's, it can be a little difficult to find which way the grain works best. There's some rough patches of grain here. And generally, I try and work across the across the grain, not with it. Um, you go with it, and it's likely to to raise up and chip. Make sure, I'm still getting this in shot. Really, yeah, that's more the direction it wants to work in. Material. It's about two point two in the middle. It's about yeah, it's almost it's a little bit there. We're not too thin here. It's down a really about half a mil from here, so um, we're gonna end up around two around, so that'll give us about a millimetre, one one to one point two millimetres, something like that in the middle over the top of the crack to support that. And the main thing is also spreading the uh, pressure from the sound post across a larger area rather than it being directly on top of the crack. Um, so I'll grab the, uh, the little Conco plane. Um, I haven't used this for a while, so I'm going to give it a, a little blade, a little, a little nip up and get it working properly, and then we'll come back. <laughs>
few different ways the brain wants to go here. So here's our um, patch piece here, obviously. Um, green direction, same direction as the top. Um, and that's not just the fact that the grain lines are running that way, the actual grain of the timber is going that way. So if you cut against it, you'll get chip bits out. Um, and then I've got eight little locators around it, which will be glued in place with a uh, bit of weak hide glue. And that'll just help me locate the patch in the right position so when I lay some chalk down and then pop the patch in the chalk rub it slightly that'll give a, a leave chalk area where we, we need to remove timber to get it to fit and that's the process we take to fit it um, and those little locators will just help me locate it in the same place every single time so they'll be they'll be glued in place leaving a little bit of room for movement to be able to get the, the chalk to, to take um, and I'm just also going to glue this piece of cello foot on here to give me a uh, to give me a, uh, a handle to make it easier to, to work this patch in place. So um, I'll glue all those bits in and stuff, and uh, be back with you with some chalk fitting shortly. See here, I've got uh, the chalk going up is where the patch is going to fit. Patch drops in there, a little bit of movement, and I'm not sure how well this is going to come up on camera. Let's just see where the chalk is hitting. Contact places with the chalk. And at the moment, I'm just using a, uh, a plane to um, cut those away until we get sort of large flat space in the middle here. We've got no had no contact at all, so I'll continue removing material from those areas with the plane just to bring it down and then uh, once it's all fitting a lot more I'll start uh, scraping it with a knife and flattening it out and scraping it off and um, getting it to fit from there so uh, I'll just give you a little bit of a shot Some of this prelim shaping that goes on. Oh. Okay, so in for a little while we'll just test this and see how it's looking. Just scraping away with a knife now. Hmm. 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 Hmm.
Okay, so we're back again. Sort of a fit we've got going on. Can be a little hard to see. to show up it's pretty much all over um, we've got um, good coverage all over so um, I'm quite happy with it I'm happy with it visually I'm happy with the feel of it there's no rocks to it it's solid um, and you can actually feel where it, when it sort of slots into to position where it's going to stick so I will um, clean off the chalk off that um, we will prime it with a run of glue first and then uh, prime the timber with, with, with a, a, a light weak run of glue first and then we'll uh, glue it in place before trimming back and Moving forward. Okay, so we just run a uh, line of glue over that. Let's glue up the end drain and seal it all up, and then we can put the actual glue in. That'll uh, soften up slightly as well. And uh, brings it to all glued up nicely. Okay, so we've quite a strong glue mix on this. Nice healthy bit of glue. On both sides. Just do it with sticking straight away. Just do a little rub joint. Get it to the point where it wants to sit best. The grain lining up as best we can. Just enough pressure to hold it in place. Doesn't need to be squashed too much. So, leave that in place until it dries. Okay, so we're back here next morning. Um, we've got our little patch and it's uh, time to see how well we, we fitted it. He's, um... Okay, so we've lifted those off and now it's just time to use roughing gouge just to um, start the combination of the roughing gouge and all planes. And we'll finish off with scrapers. Oh, I won't include too much of this, it'll get a bit more.
Give it 20 minutes and we'll be back. Okay, so we're starting to come down here. Uh, getting a lot closer to where we need to be. The grain through this part is quite hard to work, so I'll just switch to the plane to see if I can't. Slowly bring it down the rest of the way, and we'll start to see how it. Uh, how good the, the fits come up as it comes down. Fingers crossed. We'll also start to keep an eye on the um, the width shortly. Looking at that and be back again soon. So just a um, preliminary look at some measurements. We're up about 4.2 in the middle there. It needs to eventually finish at 3.1, so there's still about a mil there. This needs to be around 2.7. This end needs to be around 3.5. So, and this is sort of 3. Point one, three, three mil, down to sort of three point one, or up to three point one. So there's still a fair bit of material to come off it yet. Um, it's just a quick preliminary look at um, measurements. Okay, so we're starting to come down. Um, we're getting a nice line here of, of this. There's still a bit of material to be removed around here, but uh, if you start to see where the, the line is actually starting to come in, there's a few chips out here. The grain's broken, but there's still a bit of a lip there, still a bit of material to be removed. Um, if we have a look at this, it's going to come down to 2.7. We're still up at 3. Um, 3.3, 3.5, 3 we need to be up here about 3.7, so it's about 2.2 of a mil, uh, 0.3, sort of, yeah, there's still roughly, uh, there's still probably half a mil to come off the middle area, um, a bit of material to be removed still, so I'll keep working that down and probably come back to you when it's a lot closer to finished. So there's the soundpost patch, pretty much complete, um, and fitted in there, pretty much ready to put the top back on on this, um, which will be what I'll be doing next. Um, so it's all run down to the uh, correct dimensions. Um, I didn't actually end up videoing as much of that process of cutting it all down and trimming it all back as I, as I guess I could have. Um, that was quite time consuming, so I've just cut a little bit of, there's a few clips I think of, of trimming it back. 
um, and then uh, with the with the, the gouge and then the, uh, the plane this little plane um, and then the final final finish is just done with a uh, furniture scraper um, to to bring the finish up it's about the same as the the original finish the back of the instrument um, and then a little bit of aging work coloring work that'll lighten off with a little bit more time as time goes by this area here will lighten off a little bit uh, and the actual area of the patch is pretty much right on so um, fairly happy with how that's sort of blended in and um, we'll get the top back on it um, and look to get it set up